tutorial number 23 for Track Looper, part two. Hello and welcome to Max tutorial number 23 for Track Looper, part two. Hello and welcome to Max tutorial number 23 for Track Looper, part two. Hello. Okay, we get the idea. Hello, and welcome to Max Tutorial number 23 for Track Looper, um, part two. Um, so I'm super excited. Um, yesterday, or the last time we were together on this screen, we built this um, looper here. And a quick review, we've got it to start at zero. We can make it stop. We can make it loop. We've got a signal of one. And all of this, the groove is playing everything that's in the buffer. And last video, we set this up so it automated. When you click this X, it automatically saves a file to this uh, location. And then when you stop recording, it replaces that new file into your buffer. And it goes. Today, we are going to make four tracks out of it. So I'm just going to jump right in. I'm very excited about this. Of course, there's this, which is the way to locate your files. Actually, let's just start here. Let's unlock our patchers and say, locate message. Uh, I really, I just don't have any uh, better way to think of this than locate files. I, there should be a, a something more obvious, but because we're going to encapsulate some stuff here. We're going to want to be able to uh, to keep track of it. So there we go. We're going to locate our files. What I'm going to do right now is take the things away from here so I can encapsulate them, right? So we want our little SF record thing here. Um, uh, but what we'll take the the microphone up here, put the um, side here, we'll make it a little bigger, we'll make it cool. I always like making things cool. Okay, 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 it's looking cool. So I like it. There we go, a little right and left action there. Okie dokie, now we've got something happening. Um, we no longer need to open it. We've automated that. We no longer need to turn it on and off. We've automated that. Let's get rid of this stuff. We have the ability to record now. We can locate our files and all of this is now self-contained. So we're just going to move it down like this. Select everything below those three things. And I always press Shift Command E to encapsulate, but you can also, I won't press them right now. I'll just go up here and say um, encapsulate, press edit, come down here, encapsulate. And over here, you can see the shortcut to do it. I always use shortcuts when I work in Max. So it's nice that they put them here. So let's encapsulate it. And we're going to call this um, patcher uh, uh, J L for Johnny Looper one. Okay. There we go. There's J L one. And then um, down here, we're going to do more or less the same thing. We need to be able to tell it to start and stop. Let's um, let's make it cool looking. We'll type N for a new object, type in LED and hit return and you get an LED. Nice. But LED is sort of like a toggle, but it has a nice, um, here I'll lock my patcher for a second. See, on, off, on, off. Doesn't that have that looper feel? Not yet? Okay, I'll convince you later. Um, but what we're going to do is have it select. So n select 1 and 0. We've done this before. We're doing it again. 
So now when the LED sends out a zero, which it, uh, excuse me, a one, which it does when it turns on, it'll bang this and that'll tell it to go to zero. It's so hard to remember that zero in this particular case tells Groove to go to zero. We just keep forgetting. Why? I don't know. And then if you hit a zero, it's going to tell it to stop. Thank goodness. This is just going to tell us to loop. We have to remember that. We could write a little, uh, you can type the letter C and write loop if you want to, but we'll probably remember. I'm just, I'm just, uh, you know, showing off my, my key commands here. Okay. So there we go on and off for that loop for this signal. Hey, maybe we'll have something fun to do with, with this later. Let's type the letter F and get a fraction here, a fraction box and um, just run that down to signal so that we have something outside here that we can control it. But signal is going to start with one, which means going forward at regular speed. Okay. I'm not going to worry about the loop points right now. Um, but what I am going to worry about is that the loop looping thing and this thing and this thing are outside of our um, of our box that we're going to encapsulate here. So I'm going to just move this under here, just in case we need it late for later. So uh, we don't need the select, so I'm just going to go right under that and get all of this stuff, right? And now I really am going to use my key commands, Shift, Command, E, and I've packaged it all. And now I'm going to call this uh, oh, crumb. Uh, I use JL. Um, uh, this is going to be JL groove one. And um, you just really need a name for these things. It's not all that important. OK. And in fact, I'm not even sure that it's that important that um, these are different because they're not saved as individual things. But let's just let's just hang with it for a minute because it it it, it is important to keep things straight. OK, so this is the thing that tells us when we get to the end of a loop. And this is our um, this is our dial. So let's let's just see if that LED works. No, why doesn't it work? I'm going to tell you why. Because when you encapsulate things, it tends to erase their memory. So um, probably if we open this up, OK, we still have our loopy AIF here. So we can close that. Otherwise, we'd have to choose a file and locate it. But I think in this case, we can just record something. Um, where is that confounded bridge? OK, and then we could. Oh, I encapsulated. OK, let's unencapsulate. Well, um, I encapsulated the uh, volume knob. So let's uh, learn how to unencapsulate things. D encapsulate. There you go. And with that, it all comes apart. Uh, now we have to pick it all apart. And there's that. Put that back over there. Um, move this stuff up here so we can get it away from there. And so what did we do wrong here? We want to encapsulate that. We want to encapsulate these two. We don't want to encapsulate this little bang. We don't want to encapsulate that. We don't want to encapsulate that. And we don't, this is the, I accidentally encapsulated this. We don't want to encapsulate that. Things we don't want to encapsulate things we do want to encapsulate. So here we go again. Shift, Command, E. There we go. And um, we'll just call this uh, JG1 since we're Johnny Groove. There we go. Johnny Groove 1 and Johnny Loop 1. It, they're not particularly meaningful, but it's okay. We, can, we have to keep things separate. Okay. So 
what we essentially have here is the input side and the output side. So um, now there we have that. We have our uh, speaker that we're going to keep in the middle here. Um, we have our little bang that lets us know that this one's done. And we have our uh, dial. And um, here, let's try that recording nonsense again. Where is that confounded bridge? Okay. Yep, there it is. It should be looping. Oh, it's not looping because it erased it and it doesn't remember that it's supposed to be looping. So let's try again. Where is that confounded bridge? Okay. Where is that confounded bridge? Where is that confounded bridge? Where is that confounded bridge? Okay. Where Thank you. Thank you, me. All right. So now we have some separate channels and um, we can start sort of duplicating them. So let's go ahead. Um, we know um, that we're going to want to connect these up the same way four times, but let's leave these out here as um, placeholders, right? So we're going to um, just duplicate this. And then we, well, we actually want all these controls for all of these things. So we're going to duplicate, let's, let's make them compact here so that they're not taking up the whole screen by the time we get done here. All right. So we want this then as an output for each one of these. And here, here we go. Um, I'm going to move this over while it's all clumped together and then um, hold down my option key and just drag it. Come on, drag, drag. There we go. It's not liking it. And there's probably good reasons it's not liking it, but we'll get to those reasons in a minute. So there's our four outputs. Here's our four inputs. Now we have to go through the tedious process of renaming them and also going inside and renaming them. So let's um, first change this to JL2 and then lock our patcher and open it and you'll see what I'm getting at here. Um, when we go in here, A, we're going to have to change these because they're all pointing at the same file. But here, oh no, Johnny1, we can't have the buffer with the same name. This one has to be named something else. So let's unlock our patcher and call it Johnny2. And again, looking very closely at this, Johnny2, no spaces, then a space, and then two channels. Okay, that's what we have to do in here. We also have to remember to erase these files. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Close it. Next one. Oh, um, one thing that I, well, I'll show you on the next. No, I won't show you on the next one. I'm just going to do this. Okay. Open that one. Oh, this one says Johnny1 also. That's no good on the buffer. Unlock it. Change it to, what is it? Johnny3. Johnny3. There we go. Close it. Forgot to uh, label this as JL3. Now, you all realize that I am locking and unlocking my patcher like a mad person here, and I'm not saying it. Right now, the patcher is unlocked, and I use Command E to lock and unlock my patcher. You can also go down here and click the little lock. That's a lot of work. Um, so while it's unlocked, we'll change this name to JL4. And then we'll lock our patcher and open it and go in here and change this. Whoop, got to unlock it, Command E, or hit the little lock button and make that 
Johnny 4. Okay, I am going to show you this one thing that I do sometimes um, while this is unlocked. I actually often, when I'm doing this, I just um, copy the whole thing, Johnny 4, and also the 2. <laughs> I copy them, and not to make this more complicated than it needs to be, I open this patcher down here that has the groove in it. Remember, the groove has to have the exact same name as the, as the buffer. In this case, it was Johnny 4, but now I just paste it right in, and that way I know I've got it right. Johnny 4-2. Okay, this is simple enough that we can remember it, but let's just say there are times when uh, you don't want to be confused, and this is a surefire way to do it. Okay, there we go. Johnny 4. We can close that now. Um, I'm going to label this one Johnny uh, JG4 just so that I can remember I did it. And I, I like resizing these so they fit right underneath, but that's just me. Okay. So um, we'll work our way backwards down to JG1, but here we go. A lot, oops, sorry. Make that a three. Lock your, uh, you can resize it if you want. I like to. Lock patcher, double click. It opens, got to change that name to a three. Unlock it. I know it's very time consuming. And you could do it automatically, but that's a little outside our scope today. Um, if you were really, really uh, crazy about this kind of thing, or, or you needed to do like 300 of these, um, you could automate it. But we're not going to get into that today. I'm going to unlock my patcher, change this one to JG2. It should be the last one that I have to change. Resize it. lock my patcher, double click on it to open it, get in here, unlock my patcher, and change this one to JG2. All right. So, technically, probably everything would work right now. Um, almost. Um, one thing that you can see is that none of these are going to work because none of them are connected to the speaker. So let's just uh, take care of some business here. Um, there is our signal one output. That goes right there. This is apparently our signal two output, but there is... This is... Okay. Okay. Um, well, we'll just hook them up all up the same way. So there we go. Whoops. No. There we go. Um, there is another little trick, just by the way, which is um, holding the shift key down. I'm pushing my shift key down now. Now I'm letting it up, and then it'll just make two wires from the same place. So click over here, hold your shift key down, click there, let your shift key up, and then connect here. I'm going to hold my shift key down again just to show you what happens if you forget to lift it up. Oh, darn it. Now I have this thing and I can't get rid of it. Oh, I try clicking here, but it doesn't work. Oh, now it just makes a segmented patch cord. I hate that. Um, push down command, or I think it might be alternate on a PC, and click, and it goes away. Okay, so now technically these could all play if these could all record. They almost can, but they can't. And why is that? Well, they have the wrong files. So the first thing we'll attend to oops, is hold your shift key down, and you'll notice this goes in the fourth inlet here. So I'm going to hold my shift key down, click, click, and I let my shift key up, click. This is the um, button that tells us to record. I don't want to tell them to all record at the same time. 
So I'm going to put a new object in here, a gate, and it's going to have four openings, so space and then a four. And I'm just going to have it, well, I'm not going to have it default at all. Gate, four, that's good enough. Okay. Now, strangely, um, what's coming from this is not going to control the gate, but it's going to control its data. So we'll back this thing up to here. This is data that's coming through here. And this one is going to go to the first one. This one to the second, to the second one, third outlet, always that they're the same because we've duplicated them. Just by the way, even though these are all the same because we've duplicated them, if you de-encapsulate and then re-encapsulate something, meaning you actually have to unencapsulate it. I don't mean just opening and closing. But if you de-encapsulate it to do, remember I made a mistake over here and then re-encapsulate it, sometimes it switches the outlets around and you have to be careful about that. Um, that's just a little, uh, what would you call it, a pro tip there? So I'm going to type the letter um, I and get an integer box and that is going to control this gate. So if I want to record, um, I want to use this, but I want to tell it which one to record to. We'll get to that in just a minute because now we have another problem. These are the audio ins, but they only go to one. Now we have to run a gate for these, but it is not the same gate. Um, how can that be? Um, there is another kind of gate. Let's type in N. Type gate. Whoops. Gare. My goodness. Gate. And then you see two gates here. Here's gate and here's gate tilde. Remember what tilde is all about? It's when you have a signal. Signal. Signals are given away by the fact that there's um, striped patch cords here. Um, there's video cables that look a little bit like them, but if you see a cable like this, it's a signal cable. And so we want gate tilde, and then we're going to type the spacebar. Hey, it's supposed to give us gate tilde. Gate tilde. I'm just going to double click on it and then click over here because I don't want to mess it up. So gate tilde four. And I'm just going to move this to the side here because of course it went behind a, a little uh, wire. All right, gate tilde four. I'm going to put this one like this and then do that fun thing where you stretch it out. Oh, no, I'm not because I'll tell you why. We're going to put this over here. And we're going to put, we're going to click option on this and make a new one right next to it. Why are we doing that? Because uh, remembering that these go in the first two, right? Um, because we have to send left channel through one gate out to one, two, three, and four, and right channel out another gate. Whoops. Right channel. Highlight it. See the red ball? Click on the red ball and move it. Sorry, sometimes I forget about these uh, uh, um, simple parts. Okay, now um, to this same number, we are going to connect one here, and I couldn't hold the shift key down here, and one here. So now, when this thing has a number in it, let's say number one, we know that this will turn on and off uh, the recording to whichever one of these the number corresponds. And it will also send this signal gloriously to the right one. So here we go. Left channel from the first to the first, to from this one to this one, from this one to this one, and from this one. To this one. Whoop. Starting over with the other one, this goes to JL1, right channel. This goes to JL2, right channel. This one goes to JL3, right channel. 
and this one goes to JL4 to the right channel. Okay, looks like a big mess, but it's not that bad. So um, we could almost now check and see if this works, but there is one thing we have to do first, and that is locate the files. Now this is going to be a little bit funny. Let's lock our patchers here and watch what happens. We have a locate file thing and it's going to bang four save dialogues inside each of these. So guess what happens? We should... Oh no. Oh no. Well, let's say... J L. I'm I'm gonna go with eleven here, even though I know it's one. Dot A I F. Save. Okay, there it is. Now the second one pops up. Do I absolutely know this is actually the second? Um, do I know that this is the second channel? I don't. But all it matters is that they're different. So I'm going to go J L 12. I'm just adding 10 to the number because I already have a JL one down there somewhere. Dot AIF. Don't forget that. Save. J L 13 dot AIF. Save it. And J L 14 dot AIF. And just to be clear, you could be using your own initials and probably just one, two, three, or four. I've taught this before, so I'm using up like Johnny Loop one, I've used J Loop one, I, right? Every time I change it. So I'm just trying to be sure I don't duplicate it. So anyway, there we go. Now, let's test it out and see. We're going to huh, spin in beach ball stuff. Always like that. Okay, let's set this to one. You can click on it and drag up to get a one. Or you can just type a one, but then remember to click outside of the box. And then we're going to push this down and say one over and over. One, 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 one. Okay, let's see what we get. One, 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 one. One, 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 one. Hey, one, it works. One. Shut that off. So we could, and and of course our meter is running over here. Hey, what happened to our other meters? Darn it. Um, here, let's um unlock the patcher and move this one over here, and then um. Option click on it and make some new ones. All right, so this one comes out of the middle port to there. That one can go to there. That one can go to there. And that one can go to there. All right, they should work if we let's test locking our patcher changing to a two here and recording two 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 should we just be bold and um go ahead and hit three 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 three, three. i'm just making them a little different so that they um don't all come across the same way what should we do for four oops five five won't do anything four um a uh, little uh, uh, four beat box. Four, 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 four. Okay, I know. Believe me, it's as embarrassing for me as it is for you. So let's see what we got here. One, 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 one. 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 One, 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 one,
one one one. One one one. Oh boy. The kind of fun. One 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 one. Usually you have to pay for this stuff. Oh, there's the beatbox. Turn that other stuff down. One one one. One one. One one one. Okay, and it, also interestingly, uh, we left this uh, number up here so we could like really mess with it now. Look at that, three and a half times as fast as it should be. Oh, nice. Backwards? It's hard even to tell the difference. Okay. Hold on, stop all that. Stop, 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 stop. We should have a master stop, right? Yes, we should. Okay, um, now, how, having this thing all uh, working so beautifully so far, there is one thing that loopers generally do that is um, a great thing, and that is that they, um, they can synchronize. So if we could just get this first track to signal these other tracks, um, then we could we could say, hey, you other tracks, um, start over. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and work on that. Um, we're gonna. Uh, push this one up here. This is this is the oddball track. So let's make a oops, I'm going to move this over a little bit because I'm I'm starting to see what I'm going to do here. Okay. I'm going I'm I'm going to put it all the way up here. Okay. This is something coming down. We want to be able to turn on and off synchronization. So let's go ahead and make another gate. And this gate only needs a um well, technically, it really only needs uh, one opening and closing, and um, so you can just say gate one. It only has uh, one outlet, and it just turns it on and off, and you can do that with a toggle. So let's put a toggle here. And so when it's zero, it's off. That's closed. And when it's one, it's on. And this is the beat coming through here. And all we have to do is convince these things that when they get a bang, that they should start over at zero. So um, let's take a look inside here. Is there anything that can do that from outside here? There is, if you turned this on, that would do it, but then it would never stop. Um, and, and that's not effective. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Um, this is the on off switch. So we actually need it to do something else in here. In fact, what we need is inside here. Um, we need a way to allow this thing to just hit a zero without doing anything else. So, well, actually we do, cause we want to be able to, when we turn this track off, to have it not do that. Oh my goodness, it gets complicated. So here's what we'll do inside each one of these. This is unlocked now. Um, we will put another inlet here. I'm going to option click on this and move it over here. This is going to be the new inlet for the signal, but the signal will have to go through a gate. one and that gate will be controlled by whether um, whether the track is turned on or off so this thing is sending a zero and a one and that will control this gate is this making sense to everyone I'm this thing is now coming in here and it sends out a zero or a one and it turns and supposedly this, I'll get to it in a minute. It's locked right now, so I can't make a little patch cord. This patch cord is going to come down here 
and go through here. And it's going to be sending a pulse out. If this gate is on, it's going to send this pulse down to the zero. And if it's off, it won't. That seems simple enough. I like it. Okay. And then, so we have to connect this in here to this. Um, we will save ourselves a small amount of time if we just copy this right now, highlight it and copy it, and then close this patcher. And now um, we can unlock this patcher and connect this to there. Um, shall we try it for proof of concept? Let's. So here's open, here's closed. Let's start with it closed. We're going to turn this track on. We're going to turn this track on. But okay, so now we see they're, they're different. They're going at different speeds. Now I'm going to turn this on. And when this goes, oh, look at that. They start over now. It here, I'm going to turn this one off for a second and then start it again so you can see resets. There we go. Oh my god, it works. We're, we're geniuses. Okay, so let's install this then into the rest of these um, and, and stop that. Oh my goodness. There are certain um, things about doing this that can drive you crazy. So. Let's go ahead and open this one. We grab these and move them over. And now hit paste. I'm going to click over here just to make sure it pastes kind of in the right spot. There it is. Now, do we remember what we're supposed to do? The on off control controls the gate, so that goes over to the left hand inlet. And then the output of the gate triggers the zero, which tells it, hey, start over. All right, done, closed. Uh, let's do that to number four also. And we take all these, we move them over, we click over here, we say paste. And what was it again? Uh, inlet thing here controls the gate. There we go. It's going to turn the gate on and off. The output of that pulse is going to come down here and hit the zero and do that. And close it. And now all we have to do is put these patch cords. Let's unlock this patcher. And I can barely even remember what I'm doing, but now we have this new inlet over here. That one goes to there. And this one goes to there. So supposedly, again, we could, if we, um, let's, let's um, lock the patcher and turn your loops off so you can see it, right? And then you play your things. But, hey, there is nothing in four. Why not? I thought there was. What's going on four? I'm going to record something in four. Four, 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 four. Um, I just recorded it so this on isn't going to do anything until it... Huh? We've messed it up somehow. Oh, it's uh, no playing backwards. We don't know. What is it doing? We're getting nothing. What did I do? Four, 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 four. Uh, maybe it just had a delayed response. It's running very slow. Four, 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 four. Uh, I have no idea. Okay. Well, there you go. Now they're all on. They're all ready to play, and now we'll play number one, but we'll play it with the loop. Let's let's turn this off first and see what happens. One, 
one, one, one, one. So it's firing, one, but one, it's not. One, sorry, one, I'll turn this one. down a little bit. It's firing, but the gate's closed. Now one, one, one. we're going to open the gate one, one, and. One, one, one. Four, 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 four. And now they all they all wait until this one comes around and triggers them. Well, that is super. Maybe I don't want to listen to gate number three anymore. Now I don't want to listen to two. Nice. Very nice. Now I don't want to listen to anything. Okay. Great. So we've gotten to the next phase, which is we have like literally everything working, um, but we um, don't have a nice layout here. So let's unlock our patcher um, and start thinking about how this thing um, could possibly work. So let's just say we have our audio control over here. We have um, here, here we go. Let's just put things in presentation mode and take it from there. Um, we want this in presentation mode. We want this in presentation mode. We want these in presentation mode. I'm holding the shift key down, by the way, and just highlighting things. We want all of these here in presentation mode. We want this in presentation mode, and this in presentation mode, and even these in presentation mode, and finally these. We don't actually need the output speaker in presentation mode, so I'm just going to skip it. You see it down there at the bottom? I'm not selecting it. And now I'm going to go over here to the um, inspector, and just with all of those things selected, I'm going to hit presentation mode. All right. So now let's um, let's work in presentation mode. Um, you can go down here and click the presentation mode device, or I hit Option Command E. You can find out what it is on a PC um, easily enough. Now, <clears throat> before we forget. Um, what is what? Because things get confused when they're in presentation mode. We know that this is the record, so we can um, put a comment next to it. Uh, I'm going to put caps lock on. Record. Always nice for people to know what the heck they're pushing. You know. So there we go. There we go. Oops, doesn't quite fit. That's okay. We'll just move that over a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm going to move all of these over here to the corner because uh, because I like neatness. And then locate file. We sometimes need to do that. And then this is uh, synchronize. Uh, I'm just going to put sync. I'm going to move this one over here and that right there. Um, I guess um, <laughs> um, this really goes to the first track. Um, let me think about that one for a minute. So now we have the, I have a plan for where I'm going here. Okay, if this is the first track, it's a sort of a special track. Um, I am going to try to keep all these things straight by virtue of grouping, or maybe even by virtue of um, of coloring them. Okay, here we go. I'm taking this whole group here. And in the inspector, 
we can see that their background color is black. I'm going to change this group to a uh, background color of uh, yellow is always dangerous, but I'll try it anyway. Good enough for now. Okay, and I'm going to take this group and make it orange. Maybe orange is not a good idea. I'm going to go the other direction. I'm going to go with green. And then I'm going to do this in blue. Why did I stay away from orange? Because track one is kind of orangey. So I'm going to go with this one and make them blue. Just we can change this later, but if you get this um, confused. Now, I am losing my text here, so maybe I'll go with uh, light blue. There we go. Yeah, that's that's better. So let's we'll see where we'll see where this leads. And then in the case of this, um, I'm going to change the type of dial that it is from pi slice to uh, no, I'll leave it pi slice. I know what I'll do. Um, uh, I will change the color of the indicator though and make it um yeah, I see this is a tricky one. I mean if you make it dark yellow Tell you what, I'll make it yellow. Uh, I now I have a plan. I have a plan again. Thank God. Okay, here we go. Indicator color. This one's going to be green also. I'm, I'm changing my mind about everything here, and I'm going to make this one blue. But now I'm going to go back and make the background color. Um, I'm going to make the background color um, black and completely transparent. And I'm going to go back and make this one the background color black, but completely transparent. I'm going to go back and make this one the background color black, but completely transparent. Okay. Oh, we have one more thing here, and that is the um, when it's not indicating. Now I'm going to highlight all three of these and the outline color. I guess that's this color. I'm going to make that transparent too. There we go. And I'm going to make it a little bit more translucent. No, I'll leave Pi 1 the way it is. Okay. Here we go. So here's my plan for the looper now. I'm going to take the big one and stick it up here. And there it is. Big, right? I'm going to take the little one and put it right in the middle. I wonder what, oh, I see. I know why it's so small. Okay, I'm going to make it bigger. I like that centering ability, though, that it has. And we'll just put it right in the middle there. There's track two. Make this one a little tiny bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Come on. There's the center. And four, I'm just going to leave it the same size. I might have to make four a little smaller or three a little bigger. But, uh, I'll make I'll make four a little smaller. There we go. Okay. Now we got some stuff going on here. Oh, and look how this suddenly almost makes sense. Um if I could get this and we still don't know about this whole speed thing, right? But we can get this one like this, and this one here, and <laughs> this one here, 
do, do you, does everybody see the one I, I missed? Um, it's the, the pulse to the yellow. It's a good thing I actually labeled them the way they're supposed to be. Okay, and then I'll move this one up here. Do that. Ta-ta. All right. You could do this just about any way you wanted to. Um, I'm even seeing another possibility, but I'll, I'll leave it up to you to figure out. Okay, here we go. Now let's see how this bad boy operates, right? So we can um, lock our patcher and... Nice. Oh, sweet. Notice when it resets, it goes all over. Man, now if we turn the sink off, interesting. Oh, I'm sorry, I turned the loop off for number one, and since number one's not looping, none of the others are. I'm going to turn the loop back on, and I'm going to turn the sink off and do it again. Nice. Nice. Well, people, I think I am just going to leave it here and say that's a pretty spectacular looking looper so far. And we'll be back with some minor improvements. But I think one would have to admit that A, it was a very long video and B, um, that um, we've gotten to a really good spot here. So um, with that said, um, uh, let's see here. Oh my goodness, where's the number? Where did the number go? Number, number. <laughs> we need that gate. Uh, never mind, I'm, I'm, did we somehow lose it? Um, we need to we need to be able to control where we're recording to. I can't let you go yet because I couldn't say thanks for watching and put it in the looper. Hey, let's unlock this thing. Whoops, it is unlocked. Let's take it out of uh, presentation mode. Ah, we didn't put the number in presentation mode. So let's get back there and do that, man. You get so close to the end of the video and then you make a mistake like that. It's just terrible. So, um, there we go. Now we're going to put it back in presentation mode. Hello, back in presentation mode. There's the number. And now we know what to do with it. So now I can lock my patcher and surreptitiously uh, put it on one and say thank you so much for watching this video and then um, you know what happens but you know there's one more thing and that is that we also forgot the volume controls I know I know Take it out of presentation mode. Who Who is responsible here? Unlock it. Put these things back in there. There they are. Include in presentation. Back in presentation mode. And we happen to know that this one went to that one. Phew. Really, really winging it today. And this one went to that one. This one went to that one. And this one went to that one. And so, finally, I can say it. Whoops, I can put it in. 
<laughs> okay, I can put it in um, lock it in presentation mode and say. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching this video.